For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Mayor Armstead, uh, and this evening we've decided to uh, invite you out so we can talk about some of the, your issues and your concerns uh, in the 9th and 10th Ward. Uh, during the course of, the, of me being mayor, I've received a number of calls throughout the city. Uh, and, I, and, and, as, and as well as calls, uh, people come to my office with concerns uh, that are affecting the community, uh, often crime related. Uh, we try to address them as best we can. But more recently, I've been noticing there's been a little, an uptick in this particular area, and I've received a number of calls. So I felt the best thing that we should do is perhaps have a, have a gathering and see what it is that we can do uh, to better help you in this particular area. Um, over the last year or so, uh, there's been some very significant changes to the, to, to the police department. Uh, we have a new chief. Um, we have um, some new members of, of his command staff. Uh, so we've invited them as well uh, to try to address any concerns that you may have mm -hmm. and to uh, make you feel a little more comfortable with the job that we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish uh, throughout this whole city with regards to protecting you and making sure uh, that you feel safe in your homes. So without any further ado, I'm going to give the mic to the chief, Chief Parham, unless he wants to do something other. He is the chief. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, introduce the staff that's being represented here. Uh, but, but before I do that, I want to let everyone know how committed every member of the Linden Police Department is to ensuring that we keep the city as safe as we possibly can. Uh, we are experiencing some manpower shortages. That's just a fact. That affects the way that we respond. It affects how fast we get there. It affects how many officers come on that call. But I will tell you that uh, the Mayor and Council have been committed and continue to be committed to helping us increase our manpower, increase our ranks, so that we have enough people to adequately provide the services that we are supposed to be providing. That being said, uh, it is not a police job alone. We cannot do uh, the job that we are tasked to do without getting your help. That means that we need you to do what you already do, and that is just to become good neighbors, to look out of your windows, to notice anything that shouldn't be there, and to do the most important thing, and that is to call someone, specifically the police, your council members, your mayor, and let us know what's going on. Uh, sometimes there's a feeling that, well, the police already know what's going on. Uh, we'll just wait for them to show up. I can assure you, we don't. Uh, we need your information. You may be thinking to yourself, I don't want to bother the police. Uh, I know they have better things to do. We don't. We're here for you. Uh, if it's a concern for you, it's a concern for us. But we need to know what's going on. Unfortunately, because of the lack of manpower, we have to do something that we've never had to do before in the Linda Police Department, and that is prioritize the calls that we respond to. So in other words, the more important calls, the ones that immediately affect life and property, those are the ones that we're going to respond to first. So, for example, if you lost a pet and your dog or your cat is out somewhere and you call the police to respond and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting, it's not that your pet isn't important to us, it's that maybe at that time we have other things that may affect life and property at that particular time and we can't attend to the, your call immediately. It doesn't mean that it's not important, it certainly doesn't mean that we will not get to it. But please understand that we will do the best that we can to get to you, to get to your call, because we know that it's important to you, and if it's important to you, it's important to us. What we also need to, do, to consider <laughs> is that if we don't get there fast enough, we have no problem, and you are hearing this from the voice of the Chief of Police, with you calling me saying, what happened? We expected you to be there, and you weren't there. We wanted a police response, and we didn't get one, or we didn't get one fast enough. Those issues will be addressed by my office and I can assure you that we take them very seriously. It is our job to protect and to serve, and we will do that. It's our job to make sure that we and you work together to ensure the safety of the community. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the staff that we have here. To my right, we have the Administrative Captain, Captain Dave Hart. He's also in charge of, uh, the, of OEM. The Investigative Commander, who's in charge of the Narcotics Bureau, the General Assignment Detective Bureau, and the Juvenile Bureau is Captain Turbot, a long partner of mine. You guys know the mayor already. Uh, Sergeant Olivero, who's in charge of our tra uh, traffic bureau, and Officer Lieutenant Rick Bachman, who's a uh, patrol lieutenant within the patrol division. 
what we'd like to do is take down some of your concerns. We'd like to go around the room and address you. If you have a concern specifically to what's going on in your neighborhood, what we're going to do is listen to your concern. We will record that concern. At the end of the entire discussion, we'll have an entire list of the things that we need to, to work on. That list will be collated. It'll be thought about. We'll sit down with the mayor and council. We'll sit down with your council members, uh, the representatives for your ward, and we'll explain to them, here are the ones that we're going to prioritize. Here are the ones that we're going to get to first, second, third, and so forth. And then after we do that, we'll present that list to you again and say, here's what we did so that you know that we are being responsive to your needs. So what I've also seen is I see that we have uh, Councilwoman Gretchen Hickey in the back. Everybody just turn around and say, what's up? Holla. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see our, our motto. Councilman Medina is back there as well. Um, so the point here is that we have to work together to get these things done. But it's important for us to know what your concerns are. Um, and we don't want to assume that we know what's going on. And we don't want you to assume that just because you may have mentioned it in the past that we remember it. Um, we probably didn't. But we will write it down. We will make sure that we attend to it. And we will do it in a systematic manner so that we address your concerns as far as the priority of concerns, meaning something that has to do with life and property first, and then your other concerns about your neighborhood parking and those issues. So I'm uh, at this point going to turn it back over to the mayor, and then he can help address your concerns. Mr. Mayor. I think going forward this evening, uh, the best approach that we should have is just like open up the floor and let the residents in this particular area express their concerns or ask questions uh, direct, you can direct them to myself or you can direct them to the chief or any of the command staff if you'd like to. So um, without any further ado, um, if you have some, some concerns or some questions, feel free to ask. I see you, gentlemen. Uh, I'm Bill Nichols. I live on uh, Orchard Terrace. Uh, first, a compliment. All right. um, Sunday night, there was, there was a best described a character in the park, actually early Monday morning. Uh, in Wilson Park, making a lot of noise, moaning, groaning. So, um, Sunday night, early Monday morning, uh, there was a character in Wilson Park making a lot of noise, um, sounded like he was in distress, whatever. We called 911, my uh, fiance and I, and within five minutes, the, the, uh, there were four patrol officers there. Oh. Uh, to take care of it. So, uh, my compliments. It was a very, very, uh, very good uh, response. Uh, and we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know if somebody was being attacked. We didn't know if it was just making a lot of noise. And I'm not sure what the outcome was, but uh, my compliments to the, on that uh, response. Um, my concern, specifically on Orchard Terrace, is um, well, there's two, two concerns I have. The first is, is speeding, it's a 25 mile an hour zone. And I would be willing to bet, I'd be willing to put a paycheck on, on it, that one out of every three cars that goes past my house, I'm on the, the corner of Orchard Terrace and Academy Terrace, one out of every three cars that goes past my house is speeding. And I mean speeding 40, 45, 50 miles an hour, not just you know, 30. Um, and I don't see any enforcement of the, the uh, um, traffic laws on that street ever. And I know it's the same on DeWitt Terrace. And I've heard um, Fernwood and, and a few others as well. But there's, there's nothing, we don't see any response to that. And I know it's been brought up, it's been on, on the, uh, the blog site uh, quite a bit. Um, that's, that's one of my concerns. The second concern I have is, and this is not just for my neighborhood, but this is for the city in general. And, and I would challenge you, uh, Mayor, and, and the, the uh, city council to come up with some kind of program to address this. This city, I've been living here for about nine years now, um, this city is getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. <coughs> There's trash everywhere. Down the train station, it's trash. It's like people have no pride in their in their city anymore. They, they, they throw, you know, I, I had a conversation with Armando about uh, Wilson Park and the trash in Wilson Park. And, you know, he said it was, no slam on you, Armando. But he, he said that, that it was because it, it was so transient, people going through there. We're not enforcing it. There's, I believe the, the ordinance <coughs> in this city is $500 fine, right, for, for littering. <coughs> Imagine the, the uh, revenue that we could be taking in if we started enforcing the, the litter laws. And especially if they're transients, people that don't belong here or don't belong in the neighborhood that they're, they're trashing. 
So those are my two issues. Chief, would you like to respond? Sure. Thank you, uh, thank you for letting us know, and thank you for the compliment about the officer's uh, response. What we do is we, when we, are, uh, when we have a problem, when we have something of concern, we don't just run out and throw police officers at it. That's a waste of resources. What we do is we do an investigation into the actual problem. We look into see how big an issue it, it is. Uh, speeding on, on the, main, the streets that you named obviously is a concern. But we also have a myriad of other concerns that are happening all at the same time. So the format that we use is an action plan. We do our research on the area, we develop a plan, and then we send our resources out there, and we come up with results. Uh, the sergeant just handed me the results of an action plan that was uh, put for what they call the Sunnyside Detail. It was done on October 20th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, speeding on Princeton Road, DeWitt Terrace, Birchwood Road, Fernwood Road, Orchard Terrace, stop sign violations, district-wide enforcement. Here's the results. Uh, most of the violators were residents. That's what we're finding. Uh, a total of nine summonses were issued and one warning was issued within that uh, short period of time. To start off, the majority of the residents, or the majority of the issues that we find with speeders in those areas are residents. Um, what we like to do is we like to put it out on Facebook first and say, we're going to do traffic enforcement in this particular area. And we do that for a reason. Uh, we hope that if you're not following us on Facebook that you do. Uh, and then you can see the areas of enforcement that we're going to get into. You can also learn that at that point, slow down because we're going to give you a ticket. Uh, we're going to issue summonses because we want to show a couple of things. One, that it's a deterrent. It'll allow you to slow down and keep the area safe. And two, that unfortunately, the majority of the violators are residents. Uh, we don't want to give Linden residents summonses. We absolutely do not. But when we get complaints and we get consistent complaints, about an area when it comes to traffic violations, we will go out and do that. This is not the only action plan that I have. I have several more, and the, and the results of these action plans mirror this same thing. We issue summonses after summons after summons, and unfortunately, the, the uh, majority of the violators are residents. Uh, we would love it if the residents slowed down because we don't want to give you tickets. We certainly do not. We recognize that it's hard enough dealing with everything you have going on than uh, to now deal with getting a summons uh, specifically in the area that you live in. So we don't want to do that, but the results really don't lie. Uh, it's, it, it is what's happening. Uh, as far as the cleanliness of the town, uh, yes, we absolutely do enforce uh, those ordinance, but I'd like to give you a little context there. Uh, if there is a person who is a transient, if there's a person who uh, has no place to live, they certainly don't have enough money to pay a fine. Uh, and we can issue fine after fine after fine, and before we complete the fine. Before we complete the process of arresting this person, they are back out, nothing has happened to them, and they're waiting a court date. Uh, unfortunately, that is a never-ending cycle that, we're, that we've now begun to deal with when it comes to bail reform and a, a few other things that are, are really inhibiting our uh, progress when it comes to getting uh, the area cleaned up and being a deterrent, using the law as a deterrent. Um, it hasn't worked as well as we'd like it to. We really need your help in, in figuring out another way to get people off the streets and to get them from doing the things that are being complained about here. Just to, to follow up. Sir. So when I use the term transient and when Armando used it, I think he meant more in terms of people passing through, not homeless people. Yes, sir. I, don't, I mean, we, we do have some homeless people in, in town, um, probably far fewer than, than many towns like ours in the, in the area, actually. Um, these are people that are passing through. These are people that are, are stopping in front of Wilson Park eating their McDonald's and throwing it out their window uh, or throwing right. it in my front yard. Um, it's, we're not talking about homeless people, so it's, that's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'll tell you what we'll do, sir. We will, we're taking down notes for this. That will be a detail that we'll get, get, uh, get on top of, and we will make sure that we get back to you with the results of that. And then, again, to, again the challenge to the mayor and the, and the city council to put together a program, and I would certainly be a part of it if you want me to, uh, but put together a program citywide to, to increase the pride in, in the city. Because that's what I see. I see a lack of pride, a lack of respect for, for property and, and for basic standards. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I just want to address one part of your uh, concern, and that is um, with regard to litter. Um, at last month's council meeting, we hired um, two people uh, that were being paid by SIDS to a special improvement district on Wood Avenue to help clean Wood Avenue, to keep that as, uh, as, as clean as possible. 
Uh, and we also hired two code enforcement officers, and we hope that these code enforcement officers will be able to help us uh, issue summonses to those who don't want to respect people's property and keep our town clean. Uh, but I do agree with you. I think probably the uh, best way uh, is to try to have uh, some sort of initiative townwide uh, and, and get everybody involved, get everybody on board, children, adults, uh, and to uh, encourage uh, having a cleaner city. So uh, that, that's a good idea, and we'll definitely take that into consideration. Uh, any more questions? Next question. Good evening. Um, I'd like to know how the city goes about notifying people when a registered sex offender moves onto their street and how many can be living on the same street at one time. That is certainly a question for the chief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> State of New Jersey, we, there's three different tiers and three different levels of sex offenders. Um, first tier, basically there's no notification to uh, residents or anybody living in there. They just have to register depending on what their crime was in the past. If you live on the same block and you get a notification, what happens is Union County Prosecutor's Office comes out, we go out with them, and we make notifications to every person that would need to be by state law notified, whether it's, um, you have to be a certain level, a certain violent type criminal in order for us to come to your house and let you know that. There's a New Jersey State Police website that you can go on and it'll list all of these sex offenders in your area. And the only time there's a special notification, there's a the second level notification, we would go to schools, uh, school bus drivers, teachers, that notification. Before we would actually come to your house, they would have to be at the highest level for to make a notification out. But you can look up in your area, and it's right under the New Jersey State Police website, and you can go on any time and look that up, and it has everybody. There's no number of, <coughs> Sexual offenders that can live on the block, like 20 can live on the block. There's no, well, in New Jersey, they actually, um, a few years ago, they were limiting how close they could be to schools, churches, things where children would be, parks. Uh, that was uh, overturned through the courts, and there's nothing in New Jersey, I think New York and Connecticut, that was all thrown out. They were one of, I think, three or four states that started doing that. Well, they said you can look up on the website and find out who's in your area. And if need be, it's 100% compliance when a certain tier level comes out that somebody will definitely come to your house. They might just leave you a note, <coughs> uh, come to the police station, we have some uh, paperwork to give to you. And even then, it's very explicit that you're not supposed to share it with others or whatever. It's um, mainly it's for you and whoever's on that block or in that area. I have two questions right behind, I'll get like tier one, tier two, tier three. Right. What is pedophilia? Pedophilia. Pedophile is just somebody that preys on children. Yes, do we consider that where you let them out and they live somewhere? Yes. Why? That's, that's not up to me. That's through the courts and through the state of New Jersey laws. So you could have somebody that molests a child. They get out because the judicial system here is just full of states. And they can go live like next door to me? Sure. Now you get to deal with with your um, state senators. Oh, I still be on the state. I don't need state senators for now. Hello, I'll feel some. Go ahead. All right. So, if you go on to njsp.org and you look under Megan's Law, it'll give you all the classifications uh, for the questions that you're asking about. Um, it'll let you know uh, what level of offense. It'll also let you know what crimes are associated with that level of offense. Um, my suggestion is go on the website locate your house and then try to see who's around there because you want to let your family know you certainly want to let any children and any women know in the area um, who is in that area that has been a convicted sex offender it's just just a smart thing to do sir yes i just want to say something it's terrible what's going on with these bikes around here i was a victim of a stolen bike i came out of the movie theater my father last month. I had the bike locked up. I had it stolen. I called the parking authority. Nobody wanted to be responsible. I called the theater. Nobody wanted to be responsible. 
I wrote to Channel 4 News, Channel 7 News, and the Consumer Affairs. I had to pay $223 for a bike, a lock, and a light. I'm a senior. I don't have this kind of money. I have my receipt with me, even. I just want to say I hope this all stops. I did get a letter in the mail, like you had mentioned, okay. saying to please come to Linden Police Department. So I thought I had something wrong. So the next day, I went to the police department, and they gave me a flyer right. with the uh, comic's name that was released in my neighborhood. But that I did get. I have to say that was about 10 years ago. Anytime somebody new moves in, you would receive, depending I did on what get a level letter. it is, you would receive that type But of I had letter. no idea what the letter was about. It just said to come to the police department. Right. They, the police department by law, we're not head. supposed to ring the doorbell and tell if it might be a small child there or somebody that doesn't really live in your house. The notification has to be, be made specifically to that resident of that house and yeah, an adult. So I got home, I picked up the mail, that was in with the mail, but it wasn't addressed to me. And then when I opened it, I was like, It's within a certain area of wherever that person lives or works. Right. So that I did get. Sir. I got a question off, off of this. <coughs> How do you control the speeding on Clinton Street now, being though they got rid of all those bumps and it's nice and smooth? Because Clinton and Woodlawn don't have a speed track, especially when Phillips 66 gets out of 330. Um, we will add that to the list, sir, and we'll start looking at it. They should keep somebody on 12th monitoring. I wish we could. I wish we had the officers to do that. Um, once again, what we, the normal process that we follow is we look at these areas of concern and we try to determine if there's any accidents, if they're around schools, and that's how we get to prioritize. Uh, every ward, every district has complaints of parking and speeding. I mean, it's just the way it is, and it's in every town. So Linden is not, um, you know, we're not, it's not just specific to our area. So what we wanna do is be fair to all the councilmen and all the councilwomen who say, hey, we, we have this concern, what are you gonna do for us? We want to make sure we address the ones that are most problematic first. Again, near schools, uh, where accidents have occurred, where people have been injured, um, that's how we begin to prioritize. But we'll add that to our list, and once we can develop our action plan and start working on it, we'll be sure to get back to you and let you know what our results were. Who, who do I contact again about the state senator? No, no, you can go on your, your, the state police website. If you're trying to figure out how to change the law, you can go to the, uh, you can call the Union County Prosecutor's Office, or you can call the Attorney General's Office. I'm sorry, sir? Yeah, it's definitely going to get changed. Understood. <coughs> I don't find that. So you ruin somebody's life, and they get to go free? And they get protected. They're protected. So the judicial system in this state is <coughs> crap. You molest a child, and you're allowed to just serve your two years' time, slap on a wrist, go out and then molest another child? And then you say, well, maybe I should have kept them in, and they go out? I am certain that we all share your frustration, sir. Um, well, that's a very big <coughs> frustration for me, and I'm not sure that I would follow. You know, it's just... Anyone else? I'm sorry it takes me a minute to get up. It takes a little while, because I'm disabled. Um, I have a question about the drugs in my neighborhood. Anybody, any of you guys could just sit there and park on the street any day of the week, and you can see they walk up to these cars, in and out, and they leave. Up the corner, they bypass each other, boom, you can see they're switching. They sit out, now I don't, I don't live in these two boards, but I live right across the highway, or right across the road here. They sit in the back court, smoking their pot, drinking their beer, partying till two o'clock in the morning. I can't even tell you the numerous times I have called downtown. The last time I called down there, they followed my daughter into the parking lot, surrounded her car to where she's texting me, mommy, call the cops, please, I'm in trouble, call the cops. They got there really quick because I told them my daughter was in trouble. They are surrounded her car. They will not allow her out of her car and she can't move because she would run them over. It's getting horrible over here. 
Where is that? Right over here on Morningside. The apartment's over here. I call, every time I called, you guys came out. You guys were good. Five, ten minutes tops. But the thing is, they hear you guys come in with the sirens and stuff. They scatter. They run into the apartments. They run into empty apartments over there. They run wherever they can hide. You guys leave five minutes later, they're right back out there. I used to be able to sit out in front of my apartment. I can't even do that anymore because I have to have my oxygen with me. I have to have everything with me. And I just can't pick it up and run in the house if something goes down. I don't want to be out there, God forbid, there's a shootout or something. I really don't want to be out there. On, I used to sit out there at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and there used to be no problem. I've been living here for 32 years now. I've seen it good, I've seen it bad, I've seen it okay. Now it's bad again. I've seen it change so many times. But the thing is, they hear you guys coming with the sirens. If it's possible, maybe if you get a phone call from somebody, maybe you can put the sirens off a couple blocks away and just drive up without the lights and sirens. Maybe you can get them. But they see you coming, they hear you coming, and they just scatter. Ten minutes later, boom, they're right back out there again. Okay. No problem. Stephen Meadowitz, uh, I live on Berlant Avenue. Um, there's a major issue as far as the traffic on my street. It's the last street in on Wood Ave before you get to Cranford and Roselle. And what's happening is there, people are using my street as a cut through so they can get to the parkway or Rowdy Road. Um, I work for a school district. I work for the sports and, ut and utilities for the district. So I decided to bring home a, uh, you know, a clock to, to see how fast they're going. I'm clocking people coming off of Wood Ave doing between 40 and 50 miles an hour, 50% of the time. Not only that, but I have a, as you know, it's a, it's a one way, goes down to the road. Oh. I have a side street called Pallant, which comes to my street. So I think people missing their turn decide they're gonna try to go around the block and they're making a right going the wrong way down my street. My wife's car was told in March <coughs> by somebody who came off of whatever and lost control. Something needs to be done because someone's gonna get killed over there. People don't slow down. I've almost got hit crossing the street a few times because of how they come off of Wood Ave. So my question is, can something please be done? Speed bumps, closing the street, redirecting traffic? I don't know. Something's got to be done over there because someone will die. Once again, in this, by, by the end of the, the meeting, you'll hear me say this over and over again. Uh, we're going to take down your concerns. We're going to come up with a plan, and we'll address that. Uh, and then we'll get back to you let you know what we did. Um, we understand that there's a lot of concern for the same issues all throughout the city. And we have a limited number of resources, but we will prioritize that. Based upon what you're saying, that obviously sounds like a priority for us, uh, but we'll leave that to the Traffic Bureau to determine at what level they're going to address this, and then we'll get back to you with our results. Sir. Chief, my name. I just uh, set up an actual talk for We actually had our Traffic Committee meeting uh, last week, and that's actually one of the rules that we talked about. And it's actually on Lieutenant Smack's radar for an action plan to address the issue on that road, yes. possible speed hump, but they will be enforcing that road soon. So I just wanted to get up, and I'm sorry I haven't reached out to you since that meeting. That was last week. But uh, there, will, there will be some relief soon. And I appreciate, let me try to shed some light into that, Chief. Thank, Thank you. you. They, they've already started enforcement there. Um, so just so you know, you. they're, they're going to be as, as proactive as they possibly can to address that issue. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. Lindsay. Oh, Miss Barrett. Miss Lindsay. <laughs> so on Burnwood Terrace, like it's a straight cut through from Styles to DeWitt. And in the morning, especially, I see cars zooming. I mean, it's insane. And I don't know if we could ever put a stop sign in the middle somewhere, in the middle block, because, you know, they just floor it all the way from Styles to DeWitt or DeWitt to Styles. It's a cut through street. Yeah. Off of Styles. I mean, I don't know if that's a possibility or well, like if that's not, if you can't do it on that kind of street. I don't know. I can't. Well, do like, you know. The chief, like the Chief mentioned, any of your concerns like that, you know, we'll, we'll write all that stuff down. 
uh, and we'll hand it off to our traffic people and let them make a determination going forward. We'll take Mrs. Totoli first. And, uh, Mayor, I live, we... I've lived in Ted Ward for the last 30 years, and um, most of the streets in the 10th Ward that abut Style Street from DeWitt or Wood Avenue have been cut through streets. It's not just Fernwood or, or Elmwood it, or um, Rosewood, it's many of the streets. Um, several years back, I proposed Beechwood, where I live. When I, my children were little, there were only three kids on the street. We have over 30 children on our street now, <coughs> which is very upsetting because in the summertime, they're playing outside. When it's light out after school, they're still outside playing, which is what most kids do you know, to, to be a part of their neighborhood. And I had proposed under the former administration that Elmwood is a one way from Stiles to Verona. And I had asked for Beechwood to be a one way from Verona to Stiles. And the reason I asked for that was because, and I had a petition and everybody signed it. And the reason I asked for that was because from Verona towards Stiles, that's the straightaway where the children could see cars coming. From Stiles up to Verona, there's a bend in our road where you don't see the children until you come around that bend. I think that's something that we still need to, now that we have 30 little kids on our blocks and they play in the street, which is wonderful because I love to hear them in the spring outside. It just brings back memories of being a kid myself and the noise and the chatter of kids, which is a wonderful thing. But I think it's something that we need to re rethink about, maybe making that, since you have one going up, then having the other one going down. Well, again, we'll take all of your concerns and we'll try to write as many of them down as we possibly can and we'll forward to the chief and, and to traffic and hopefully we can uh, come up with some new ideas on how we can make things better in this particular area. Uh, Councilwoman Hickey had a question in the back, I believe. Uh, question, a comment to uh, Ms. Lindsay. Um, I, we saw your post on next door a uh, neighbor that Armando and Councilman Medina and I are on constantly. Uh, we have addressed some issues with our accident committee, Fernwood being one of them. We're looking into four-way stops. The studies are being done, they could be, be being done now, for uh, uh, Myrtle and Fernwood, and also for um, Verona and, what was it, Verona and and Elmwood. There's a couple different studies because we want to slow the traffic up. Uh, the hike program, um, amazing. They have been enforcing um, different issues in our neighborhood over the past week or so, and also they have been around our schools as well. So uh, Councilman Medina and I, we are working close together to make sure we uh, slow down the traffic a bit in our wards with uh, better signage. And, and just so everybody knows, uh, over the last year or so, uh, we've been entertaining a number of requests for uh, four-way stop signs. And, and again, it's at the discretion of traffic and, and the police department to make that final determination because you just can't put them everywhere. Uh, but we have been noticing that the ones that we have installed have proven to be very effective. So uh, again, if the chief and the traffic de department division deem it necessary, I'm, I'm certain that they will uh, proceed with creating more. So. Gentlemen in the back. I just want to put something out there. Hey, it's good for you. Uh, Sunday morning I walked my dog uh, on uh, the way by uh, McManus, and I noticed one of the utility boxes was open. Okay, it wasn't sealed closed. I didn't know if somebody went in there or what was going on. I wanted to call the police department as a non-emergency. So I went on my cell phone, I went on the website, trying to find a non-emergency phone number for the police department on the website is a nightmare. Also, I dialed 411 and called information. They gave me the policeman's uh, federal union. <laughs> as the phone number for the Linden Police Department. Wow. My suggestion is maybe on our website, make it a little bit easier to find a non-emergency number. Later in the day, I saw a police officer driving around. I flagged it down and I told her about it. And her suggestion to me was, 
You can dial 911, just let them know it's a non-emergency uh, situation. But the website's a little bit difficult to uh, navigate. Well, just so you know, um, we're in the process right now of overhauling our, our, our website. Um, uh, it's in a, in a beta mode right now, but we, we, we plan on, on, uh, on unveiling it in its totality within the next couple of weeks or so. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, my secretary told me as of today uh, that it was unveiled. And there's going to be some quirks and some, some kinks in it that we're going to try iron, to iron it all out. But I'm sure um, it's a much better website than we've had in the past. But I don't know how you go about talking to a phone company with this 411 thing, but try getting the Linda Police Department and uh, you're going to get the uh, police federal union or a federal police union, whatever it was. Roselle has declared itself a sanctuary city. Now, have you noticed any increase in burglaries or any of that? Or are you prepared if it gets worse? Well, are we prepared if it gets worse? You know, my job as the mayor is to try to work with council to guarantee that we have the funding and the manpower uh, to protect the citizens. Uh, I haven't seen an increase uh, after they declared themselves a sanctuary city. Um, I just know this, that uh, we don't care whether you're in a sanctuary city or, or who you are. If you come into Linden and you commit a crime, um, you know, it, we're going to try. Our police force will, will come after you and do everything, do what is necessary to see to it that you're apprehended and locked up. So I don't care. We don't care who you are, you know, where you come from. You commit a crime. And we're not a sanctuary, we're not a sanctuary city either. I don't care who you are. If you commit a crime and, and, and we catch you, you're going to get locked up. After I straighten Linden out, I'll go for Senate. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Well, if you, run, if you run against Corey, I'll vote for you. <laughs> the thought has crossed my mind. So. A couple of times, three, four times within the last 40 minutes, I've heard two words limited resources. What are we doing? Well, you know, that's a very serious issue because I think. Um, more and more towns are being stretched to the limits as far as the, the budgets are concerned. Uh, uh, but, you know, we're doing the best we can. I think over the last year, I think we've, we've had about 30 new police officers, Chief. I, I can address it if you like. Okay. So, so I'd like to add some context to the, to the term limited resource. Uh, what it means is obviously that we don't have enough police officers to do the job that we'd like to do as fast as we'd like to get it done. Uh, and that's done for, unfortunately, that's for a number of reasons. A while back, officers retired. Uh, they, you know, unfortunately passed away. Uh, and in administrations gone by, those officers were not replaced. Uh, and as time went on, the call volume for the police department continued to escalate, but the manpower stayed the same. So here we are with the same amount of resources, trying to answer more and more and more calls per year. Uh, we're already more than 20,000 more uh, calls for service at this point in the year than we were last year. Uh, at this same time. This current administration has committed to hiring more police officers. Uh, that's fantastic. I can honestly tell you that whatever I've asked for by way of resources, we have been uh, given, the given a response from the, the mayor and the council that we'll get that for you. But it takes time. If we hire an officer in December to go to a January police academy, he will be in the academy from January to June. He will come out of the police academy and he will be in training from June until December. He will not be good to be in what we call solo patrol until the next January. So try and understand that no matter what we do, uh, and as fast as we're trying to hire them, 
we still have the element of time to deal with. It takes one year from the time that the officer is hired until he or she is actually available or able to go into a solo patrol in a, in a police car. So we're at the point now where we're going to hire a number of officers in 2018. 2018, in essence, is a wash. Uh, they won't be any good to us in the sense that we won't be able to use them for manpower until 2019. So we'll have this limited resource problem again tomorrow. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, I know what you should do, just make your training a little bit shorter. Here's what happens when you do that. When we don't go through the proper process to effectively research people and hire the right people, and then send the right people to the academy and monitor them, and then bring them out and train them properly, we end up missing things. We miss character flaws. We miss some legal issues that may have, we may not have caught along the way. And then that police officer gets here and he or she does something criminal. And then we're in the newspaper. And then people are saying to ourselves, hey, what's going on in Linden? We don't want that again. Uh, we will do everything we can do to make sure that doesn't happen again. We will follow the process the right way. We will work hard to hire them. And we have a model. We will hire slow, but we will fire fast. And that's just the way we want to do it now. Thank you. And just to, to add to that, um, you know, we inherited, I, I, as the mayor, inherited over $2 million in lawsuits from a, a police department that I wasn't in charge of or, or, or Chief Parham wasn't in charge of. Uh, and he's right when he says that uh, we have to be very vigilant and we have to vet properly before we can just put a, a police officer on the force. Because like I said, when you, when you hire fast, you're, you're, you're prone to make mistakes. If you don't vet properly, you're gonna get that police officer who you don't want on your force who's gonna do something that's inappropriate and it's gonna cost the city money and we can't afford, afford to let that happen. But I have Councilman Brown here. He's ha he has to go and he's chomping at the bit. He wants to talk a little bit about the financing. Uh, he's our numbers guy when it comes to uh, the budget and uh, he wants to come up and talk for a few minutes before he goes uh, and add his uh, quote unquote two cents. Come on up. I'm sorry, so my sole purpose here is to talk about the numbers and you mentioned the limited resources because it ties hand in hand. That's the role of the council here. So I've been on the finance committee for, our, I want to say the last four or five years. And so what we have done, because all your concerns are very valid concerns and limited resources is something you guys keep hearing about and what is the council doing to do that? So over the last four years, we, um, previous to the police chief here, we've, we've asked the police chief prior and this police chief as well to come up with a five-year game plan as far as how many officers do we need for the city. So I believe last year or this year, we increased the complement of police officers in the city from 135 to 150. As a result, we can't just hire 15 police officers right off the bat because guess what? That directly affects property taxes here in Linden and we do understand the needs and concerns of residents where we need to stabilize property taxes. So what we try to do is in January and in June is hire enough police officers based off the recommendation of the police chief to not only fill the people who are retiring, but to ultimately reach that goal of 150 police officers so that the speeding issues that, you guys, uh, that everyone's talking about, um, the, the crime and things like this that we can address. So this is something that we have been working on and will continue to work uh, on is to hire police officers. That is probably the number one goal of the council, the mayor, and the police department is to hire police officers. On the flip side is the resources, is things um, in the police department, whether it's police cars, cameras, um, computers, things of this nature that our police department was outdated for a number of years as far as the resources that they had. And so we've gone through the process of replacing their cars where we've taken it out of our capital budget and put it into I mean, out of our current fund budget into our capital budget to replace their uh, fleet. Um, I think we have cameras throughout the city at certain locations, 17 at the um, train station that wasn't there last year. Um, I think two, three years ago, we spent about two to three million dollars replacing the computers that weren't updated since the early 2000s. So this is a process that we are currently working on, but we also have to take in mind property taxes and making sure that we are, you, you are not experiencing a high spike on a municipal level, but that we're able to stabilize it, but then also take care of your public safety needs as well. So that's all I have. Thank you, Peter. Do we have any more questions? Mm -hmm. Go over here. Ed Campanella, Northwood Avenue by uh, Palisade. Uh, 
Uh, I wanted to comment first and thank you very much for the tremendously quick response to emergencies, particularly to our home. Too bad they were both on Christmas Eve, but <laughs> hopefully not this Christmas. And, uh, but the response uh, from the uh, police and the fire department are absolutely phenomenal in emergencies, and I thank you. The question uh, that I want to uh, comment on is, number one, the, the, the uh, speeding on Wood Avenue, particularly after 2 a.m. when the bars close or whenever they close, I have seen motorcycles going down the street, look like they were 70 miles an hour on one wheel. Uh, trucks, 18 wheels, flying down the road. Now, Wood Avenue is uh, half Roselle, right? And so you got two police departments, so hopefully there's coordination as to patrol. But maybe some could be sitting there at night and watching what's going on. And particularly on Saturday evenings, at 10 o'clock, there are some folks that come down Elmwood, make a right turn, and they are motorcycles, and they make those wild, wildly loud noises. Somehow they have the wrong mufflers or what. Um, and they must live in the area, you know, but uh, that's kind of a very annoying thing. And, uh, and the last thing would be, I would suggest, I've gone up and down, um, St. George Avenue, like a lot of folks have, right? And particularly when the high school children are crossing the street. It's a horde of kids crossing the street, and it's really fantastic to see them all together, walking very carefully, a lot of them with, you know, staring at their cell phones, but I think it's a, it's a safety hazard because, you know, you, you've already responded, the police have already responded to the, uh, terrorist attacks that, that occurred in, in uh, Elizabeth, I think it was, down, down the road there. Uh, my suggestion is not cheap, but it's something to think about for the future. You could put a tunnel. You could put an underground, you know? Like they make a subway, they dig a hole and they cover the top. And so that the children could cross and not be uh, potentially, you know, some coop one to different kids at once. It's happened in other countries, it's happened in other cities, and uh, I, I was just sitting at the light last week just noticing, you know, it's a few hundred crossing at once. What, what a right target that is for, for a terrorist. So, just something to think about. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, sir. Uh, I, wanna, I want to address the issues around the Central Park. Um, and respond to, to your comments about that. Uh, October 13th and 14th, which were a Friday and a Saturday, uh, and the 20th and 21st, which are also Friday and Saturday, uh, we enacted an action plan out there um, to address the quality of life issues around Central Park, crowd control, um, loitering complaints, destruction of property, speeding on Wood Avenue, permit parking for residents only. Uh, as a result of that, 27 permit parking violations were issued two summonses for careless driving and two summonses for failure to observe traffic signal. Uh, and this was uh, the crowd control, also crowd control before and after closing. So this is the kind of response that we'd like you to come to expect as we move forward. Uh, you cite an issue for us, we conduct a survey, we enact an action plan, and we provide results for you. The benefit of this is also to us because what we can say to you, one, we are being responsive, uh, but two, we cannot be everywhere at all the times. Uh, it just is not possible. Uh, every single ward, as we've been saying, complains of the same thing. Some are more problematic than others. Certainly Central Park is a bigger issue for us, uh, so we make sure that we continue to do that, as, you, as is evident by the amount of uh, resources and time we put into this. But as we continue to hear your concerns, we will record those concerns, work on our action plans, and we keep a file of all these things. We'll make sure we get back to you to let you know that uh, you're not, the, your concerns are not falling on deaf ears, so thank you so much. Uh, but as far as the tunnel, I don't know about that one. No. We're working. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I'd like to ask the chief a question. Chief, the Ma mayor's office has gotten several um, complaints in regards to McManus and the high school and, and their students. Mm -hmm. um, walking four, five, six abreast in the middle of the street, not moving for... Um, 
vehicles that are accessing the roadway to travel to wherever they're going. Um, I have made um, calls to Dr. Robitosi, um, to um, Mrs. Horry, and to the uh, McManus principal on behalf of the mayor's office, basically to no avail. Mm -hmm. What is it that we can do? And I'm sure they're experiencing this over at Seoul also. I I'm not, but I just haven't gotten the phone calls. Um, what can we do in that aspect to address that issue? So this is a common question that happens all the time whenever school starts. Um, I would like to add a caveat to this. Um, our only response, or our primary response, is going to be the issue summonses. And you say to yourself, well, good, if the kids are walking in the street, they should get summonses. No kid is paying those summonses, though. Their parents are going to pay those summonses, and those are taxpayers. Uh, and you say to yourself, hey, that's great, maybe they'll stop walking in the street. We've been doing this for years, and we do the same thing over and over again. And we write tickets to these kids, and their parents come back and complain, and the kids walk back in the street again. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily a police response. And I say that because our answer is always enforcement. We can enforce all day long. We can write tickets until we run out of ticket books. Someone is going to have to pay for that, and they're, used, they're going to be taxpayers that are going to complain. There has to be a better way. There has to be a way for us to speak to the parents, speak to the school staff. There's got to be some other way other than just finding people to get the kids to stay out of the street. Now, I understand that it is a safety hazard, and I'm the first person to tell you, we don't want to, we don't want to respond to uh, an incident where a child is getting hit by a car. But to continue to just go into the pockets of the parents over and over again with no results, and that's my point. We're writing tickets over and over again, and we're not seeing a change. We've been doing this for years, and we have the same response. Go up there and write tickets. Go up there and write tickets. Well, they do it every year. Uh, so what we're doing isn't working, and at some point, we need to ask ourselves, why are we continuing to do the same thing, getting the same result, and wondering why it's not working, yet doing the same thing over and over again? There's got to be another way for us to get this. Uh, the answer for me right now is we don't know. I, I don't have the answer other than to continue to write summonses, but I think there's, there's got to be an answer out there. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. How you doing? Uh, my name is Manuel McFadden. Um, I was somebody said give them detention. I uh, I hear a lot of people talk about the parks is uh, filthy. The train station is filthy. I think what we should do with our youth. You know, some of the parents are single parents, so they can't be there and watch their kid all at one time. So as the police and uh, you know the people at the uh, city hall, when you give them a summons, have their parents to come to court and we give them a little detail to do. That's how our parks get clean, our, our train station could be clean, and that'll give them a, 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 a way of uh, respect and, and uh, responsibility. You know? No, the parents don't have to. The parents didn't throw the paper or the parents didn't walk in the street. The kids did, but we have to get the parents okay to give them this, you know, community service just for one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying they got to do it all month long, but if they want to throw throw uh, garbage in the streets and walk in the street and act a fool, you know what I'm saying? This is what they, this is what we have to do. We have to be their parents too. We got to help the parents to be parents. Right. That's a very good idea. I like that idea. The chief has informed me that that's a determination that's made by the judge, so we'll have to talk to the judges and get them to be willing to enforce some, such a degree. Yeah. 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 High School. Sorry, I just want to respond to, uh, on behalf of the school district. Our principals, VTs, and security are outside. A lot of them have had, uh, a lot of our teachers have discussed with the students about littering, about jaywalking, about doing different things, and how to respect each other. Um, unfortunately, you can only do so much. Our principals can only watch the children so far. You can have our security guards driving around from the high school or even a juvenile police officer drive around, stop the kids. As soon as that officer leaves, the kids are right back to doing what they're doing. So it, uh, I know it's to no avail, but we have been working with our children. It just only goes so far.
You're me the train station? Well, that's New Jersey Transit. Uh, is, they're in charge of the train station. You know, unfortunately, we, we do ha uh, have uh, manpower that, that's at the train station to help clean uh, because that's a necess necessity. Because if we do it, if we, if we didn't, if we, if we didn't, it would be totally horrible. So we have to man it, you know. And we have a, we have a, a joint financial agreement with New Jersey Transit. We, we collect a certain amount of tolls, I mean, the uh, parking fees, so we are responsible for a certain amount of the cleanup as well. They're not moving their interest. Real quick, just to, just to let me off your NJ Transit point. Um, you said we have a financial deal with NJ Transit. Uh, I'll be the first one to say it. Councilman Brown and every council person here will tell you they're not holding up their end of the deal. Uh, NJ Transit this year spent $500 million of their capital budget to uh, for their day-to-day -day operations. And Linden's not high on its uh, totem pole right now for them to come and fix up our train station. Now the mayor and the council has appropriate funds in order to do what we, what shouldn't be data. We're responsible for day to day um, under the lease agreement. They need to do the major repairs. It's almost coming down to the point that we're almost being forced to do the major repairs uh, when it's not our responsibility. It's not supposed to be our responsibility through the financial agreement we have uh, collecting the money at the parking. So. It's a mess, and it, it, it will get resolved. It's just going to take some time. We've got our finance guy here. Come on back up, Peter Brown, Councilman Brown. He can give you the details as to what we're doing financially to try to, uh, to resolve the issue. And uh, it may just boil down to the portion of money that we paid at the, the uh, New Jersey Transit being withheld and uh, us utilizing it the way we have to. Go ahead. All right. So New Jersey Transit, I see some people that we've, uh, for the last couple of days, me and the mayor, and Barry Jarvis have been at the train station trying to get a petition signed because, again, New Jersey Transit over the years have not held up their end of the bargain. So in the New Jersey Transit contract, which this goes back to when Joe Saliga was CFO, uh, makes the distinction between what is a repair and what is maintenance. City of Lynn is required to maintain anything from the platform down, and New Jersey Transit is required to make a repair. So I'll give you a simple distinction is that if you look at some of the glasses broken at, at the train station, well, we can't even make those repairs because the trim and, and the uh, frame is beyond a, re a maintenance issue, so now it needs to be repaired. So for the last couple of months and even years, the city has been talking to New, Jer New Jersey Transit demanding that they make these repairs. So alternative uh, approach that we come up with earlier this year was saying, you know what, the city of Linden will bond a million dollars and there's an ordinance that we have been tabling for the last couple of months. We will bond it to make these repairs on New Jersey Transit's behalf. But in order to pay for that bond, residents of Linden, we don't want responsible uh, for the foot in the bill. We want to take that portion, that, the 40% that we give to New Jersey Transit, withhold that payment to pay back that bond so at least the repairs get done and that Linden residents are not foot in the bill for these repairs. So I want to say since June, we sent a letter out to Michael Murphy at New Jersey Transit. Our city attorney, Dan Antonelli, has been on top of this. And New Jersey Transit has not been responsive. This is why this week, a couple of us have been on the New Jersey Transit platform get, trying to get a petition signed demanding that New Jersey Transit with, um, uphold their end of the bargain. Because it's not a matter of just the ramps that need to be repaired. Um, if you go there, they're, they're bad. The stairs, I think there's a stairway that's been closed since, um, since May. Um, you, you got infrastructure issues there. And what we want to do is not just fix the problem, but enhance the area as well. So uh, we are currently working on this, but New Jersey Transit has not been responsive. Can we stop the trains? No. <laughs> Can we stop the trains? No, no. And ironically, the thing is that New Jersey train line that runs through Amtrak, Amtrak owns the track. New Jersey tran Transit owns the platform and stuff. That's one of the most profitable lines for Amtrak and New Jersey Transit, and for them not to give us assistance is, is really a shame. And so, and, and one other side note, we are making some improvements to the parking lot. The, our parking lot side, again, we're taking some of the money. We get 60% of the revenue. There's a section that's before the train tracks on the, um, the southbound side that we will be repaving this year. In, in furtherance of his comments, um, as the town grows vertically in, in, the, in the transit village area, I'm confident that council and, uh, and myself will be uh, formulating some plans uh, for the creation of a, of a new train station. Uh, the devil will be in the detail, but that's something that we're going to be pushing forward. 
uh, working very hard to, to make, make sure that it happens in the future. I got some hands in the back there. Yes, sir. Speeding, like everybody says, speeding. I won't cross the weight in the morning at five in the morning walking the dog because I can get hit. The other thing is, the, we're on both one ways. The signage is garbage. There's no one way signs, there's no do not enter, or it's faded where you cannot even see it. We've witnessed numerous times during the week people coming off a of highland right next to the school, coming up my block the one way going through the other intersection of the WIC because there's no stop sign there. People go there, they're risking their lives. There was a major accident last year where they flipped around and hit a tree. I'm surprised they didn't hit a house. And another issue is beside the signage and the speed on the WIC and the Raritan Road, the, the light. I will not leave that light until it turns green for five to 10 seconds. Yeah. 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 Because I almost got T-boned twice yeah. off of Raritan and the wind. I don't know if there's a light issue or if there's right off by the Chinese place over there, I don't know the name of that street, but they just come around and I mean, I almost got T-boned twice. So I sit at the green light in the morning. And that's a safety issue. I think it's the way the lights turn. Like one light turns red, but it's still green. So yes. people still go through, but you're actually, it's green, but it's still going through. Or they go through the yellow light and they don't stop. So that's where, uh, there's going to be a bad accident one of these days. We'll, we'll have to take it up with the county. It's a, it's a county road. I'll have, I'll have the, our traffic uh, people consult the county to see what they can do to try to remedy that situation. But it is a county road, and ultimately they're responsible for it. But uh, ultimately, we're responsible for the safety of the residents, so we will make sure that we get on that right away. Mayor, if I, if I may, we just actually updated. I'm your councilman, by the way, Armando. We actually, just a few weeks ago, I entered an agreement with the county and Cranford to update the lights. The problem is those two middle lights, a mowing of the mowing and the wind. Yeah. Before, the bird's nest used to just lay their eggs and yes. build nests. So yeah. that was blinding the driver. You're supposed to stop at that second stop. We actually, with the agreement with the city of Linden and Cranford the county, we actually updated those lights just recently. And I've been hearing a lot of good news. So people are actually stopping now that second light. So they actually got rid of the lights with the louvers and actually installed the LEDs. And once you get closer to the light, they actually brighten up. They're the same on Centennial. So before we leave tonight, make sure you have my contact information. I apologize for not reaching out to you guys sooner. As, as, uh, as, as, as Kirk Witt, there is an action plan in place. Um, I can fill you in on that. I want to take away from the meeting. But I just want to update the light. They were just recently updated. So. Keep an eye on that. We'll oh, they get fined. They, they get fined, and, and, and in most cases, mm -hmm. they lose their jobs because uh, you know if you're a, a, an employer and you yeah. have um, uh, an employee that, that, that runs into a railroad trestle, uh, he, he just he gets fired almost immediately. You want me to say what Joe Pollard said a couple weeks ago? Why not just be, why not restrict? Well, that is certainly something that we've been talking about as well, uh, making sure that we re reroute the, 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 the tractor trailer traffic. So uh, that is something that will most more than likely ha occur. But again, that's traffic. Yes, sir. Why we've spoken about this many times over the last couple of weeks. It's a multifaceted problem. Some of these trucks are making deliveries there. Believe it or not, some are actually box trucks, which are not tractor trailers. We had three box trucks in the last couple of months hit that bridge also. So it's a double-edged sword. There was new signage that went up. Believe it or not, if you've seen the bridge, there is new signs that went up by the county in the last three or four weeks. Uh, there's no easy answer. I agree with the truck issue. Detouring may be uh, maybe an option, but several of these trucks are straight drive box trucks also, which have hit the bridge. I know, but a lot of them are making deliveries in the area too, and again, it's, it, this is no easy answer. We see your uh, point. Mayor, if I can add one other thing on traffic, I don't want to steal the Chief's thunder, but while we're talking about all these uh, traffic enforcement throughout the city, uh, I'm not sure if this is brought up in any of the other meetings, we do have a height unit, which is a new traffic enforcement unit under Lieutenant Mack and Sergeant Oliveira. It's a floating unit to do enforcement throughout the city. 
Uh, maybe Sergeant Oliveira can talk a second or two on this. I know she particularly come up just to enlighten you. Uh, traffic is an issue in every ward, as we said. Speeding, we, as we know, is a theme everywhere. If I lived on a street and cars were flying by my house where I had children or walking my dog in the morning, I'd be upset too. Uh, so we are addressing it. We're triaging these priorities based on safety, as the Chief said, and we do have this new unit which has been initiated several months ago. So, how are you? I'm Sergeant Monica Oliver from the London Police Department Traffic Bureau. Like the captain has said, we have initiated uh, what is called the height unit. Um, I have my two officers there. If you would just please stand up. Right now it's Officer John Halkius and Officer Nicole Andrews. They have been addressing your issues. Uh, the couple issues that have come up here that the chief has spoken about have actually been initiated by us. We've uh, done some enforcement the past two weeks and we have the results. If you have any type of complaints, again, go to your council. They come to us, they contact us regularly. We take a look at the streets, we take a look at the issues, we form a plan and we execute it, and then we have the results for you. Uh, any questions about the unit? Sir? I'm not sure if this is related to you, but the mayor already addressed the problem on Wood Avenue with the lights being like three seconds and you can't get across. I have like once every two seconds of state. Now, for five years, we've been having a problem on Clinton Street crossing the highway going south end. You can't get through it. Because we used to have a sign that said, do not block the box. This is now my sixth year complaining about this. And they fixed it on Bachelor, and they put a do not block sign on Clinton on the highway. That sign lasted a month, and then it miraculously disappeared. So now when you try to cross Clinton, from either the church side or my side, you can't get across. So now tempers are starting to flare because as the people back up, people are just pulling up and staying here and waiting for them to move. And this has been five years. It's been addressed to tell the guy that the truck. The, oh, the guy that the truck out of the yeah. Yeah. And then it, it goes nowhere. They go to the state. When Verbunker was here, oh yeah, they went to the state. Uh, Sadowski, they went to the state, and what they did is they put up the do not block the box, and they were supposed to come and paint the lines. You can't get nothing. With the new paving of, of US-1, uh, DOT has been notified, and uh, they have assured us that they're going to make the necessary uh, Clinton, Wood, and, and uh, what's the other one? Bachelor. And Bachelor. They're going, they're going to go ahead and make all the, uh, the, the delineations that are necessary. The markings, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And if you notice, they just repaved that, uh, that, that highway, the road yeah. there. So, so coming soon, they should be, uh, it should be taken care of. I know when I told you about that light on Wood Avenue, both St. George and uh, the highway, it's like every other time or every second time, the light lasts like three seconds of green. So now traffic is backed up to 15th Street on Wood, trying to get across until you get the next light that stays green for mm -hmm. whatever. But it's like, it goes home with the state. Well, they're pretty tough to deal with, trust me. At all levels. And one more plug before I sit down, uh, if, I, if I may. As the OEM director, uh, community meetings, it's always an honor to be with the chief, command staff, and the mayor and our council people. We're pushing emergency alert within the city. Uh, if you're tech savvy, please sign up for our Linden Police Facebook page. Also, our Nixle alerts, uh, nixle.com. You'll get emergency alerts uh, in the city. Uh, we have a very robust public information officer, Lieutenant Gunther. Uh, he sends up, he updates our webpage daily, anybody who's on Facebook. We give out the good feel stories of what's going on in the, in the city, uh, police alerts, crime alerts, and things like that. So please sign up for our Linden Police Facebook page and also nixel.com. You'll get all the emergency alerts for the city from OEM, from the police department, anything that you need to be aware of, weather-wide traffic issues, or any city-wide emergency you need to be aware of. Thank you very much, Mayor. I saw a few other hands up in the back. Uh, Councilwoman Hickey. Yes, over there, you're doing a really great job. You've been very patient with us, and I, I know sometimes Councilman Medina and I hit you like you know, da da da, you know, all different blocks. Um, once the program, you know, I know it's a newer program. Once we get up and running, you guys know the spots that it's happening to. Are we going to get on maybe a little bit of a rotation so the council people don't have to irritate you as much? 
So just to answer that, initially when the program was started, uh, the main enforcement was going to be on the highway. Um, like we talk about, the highway is very inundated with traffic, tractor trailers, cars, block in the box. So that was initially. Then we started getting inundated with day-to-day -day issues around the city. So I would like to say yes, eventually it's going to be on some type of a rotation, but we constantly every day get complaints about different areas, and unfortunately I only have two officers. Um, so we try to do a couple details here, a couple details there. Um, I don't know if it's ever going to be smoothly a rotation type of plan, but we're definitely going to try to address issues. Thank you. And I have to say, you've been an asset for the 1970 board and um, the residents and councilmen and I really appreciate all three of you and keep up the great work. Thank you. We have a gentleman in the back there. I'm John Pistol, 1706 West Over Road. I'm a business owner on the opposite side of Route 1. And the question I have is, <clears throat> we have a lot of problems with, and I know you, the police department, it's a small issue for them with all of the other bigger issues within the city. But blocking the box on Route 1 and 9 is a big problem at the height of rush hour. I try to get, it takes me 30 minutes sometimes, maybe even longer, and sometimes I have to actually go into Rawway to make it back into Sunnyside, into the 10th Ward. Um, can we, and again, this is all, you know, it's all logistics, can we maybe paint boxes on Route 1 and 9, like they do in New York City? I don't, I don't think you heard earlier, we, we, we just discussed that, that, um, that, the road was uh, it's just been paved, and DOT does have plans to come paint the boxes uh, very shortly. I have another question about the uh, train station. No, not one question. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the train station. Uh, we all remember when the steps were were in disrepair, and and I think the Public Works Department did a fantastic job in rebuilding those steps. Is the train station was the train station responsible for? the payment of those steps being rebuilt and also if we are going to bond out monies for repairs to the train station are we going to recoup the interest from the bonds and the, that monies that that are put out in bonding it, it is our intention that the money that we recoup for um, that we're supposed to pay New Jersey Transit it is our intention to use that money to offset any type of bonding that we have to do from the, the parking meter money. Thank you. Gentleman in the back. How are you doing, Mr. Mayor? Right. This question is actually for the police chief. I live on Orchard and Melrose Terrace. Oh, you're, you're good. I know about a year ago or so there was a big problem with wheel theft in the area. I haven't heard so much of it lately. I was just hoping that you could give us an update as to what has been done and what's going to be done to uh, try to, to end it. I, I couldn't hear you too well, but I think you talked about vehicle theft over there. Oh, we, wheel theft. <laughs> One of my detectives uh, was working with the state police and probably 10 other uh, departments uh, throughout northern New Jersey. Uh, they made quite a few arrests about six months ago, nine months ago, and pretty much put that whole gang out of business. Unfortunately, with bail reform, a couple of them are back out. We're still uh, working with Elizabeth, Hillside, Jersey City. But we haven't, Maka would have been uh, having that issue in Linden. I think maybe one I remember in the last few months. Um, and why I'm here, I run the uh, Detective Bureau. Please lock your car doors. It's probably since the beginning of this year, we probably had 60 or 70 car burglaries. There wasn't one door that was locked. We had one where a pane of glass was broken, but the uh, woman told me she thinks it was her neighbor because she blocked her driveway. So please <laughs> lock your car doors. Uh, we have, um, in the last two weeks, we've locked up a bunch of individuals that were involved in some commercial burglaries. Uh, we charged one gentleman with four of them. Uh, the detectives went out, got fingerprints, DNA, did a really <coughs> good job. Um, same thing with your video. Please share your video with us. We have a program we can just sign up. We're not going to go into your video in your, in your house or whatever. All we're going to do is if you join and get on our website, uh, if it's 301 Northwood Avenue, we go on our computer. If we have some type of problem in that area, 
who would contact you. And what we do is we have your name, address, uh, your email, and your phone number, and also the number of days that that video will stay on your system. Some stay for 24 hours, some up to a week or two weeks. Also know how to retrieve that video. We've been to quite a few houses. People have the video, they have no idea. They don't know their passwords. Uh, there's no tape or CD or anything in there. We had one just a little while ago. One of my detectives went out into a business. It hasn't been recording, he thinks, for two years now, and it was a perfect spot where we would have saw the crime take place. With these videos uh, we've gotten from the businesses recently, we've um, charged this one gentleman with four counts of uh, burglary. Took him off the street, the county kept him. We also had uh, an individual we locked up for car burglaries. We charged him with four separate ones. He admits to probably doing 20 or 30. He has a drug problem. He can't remember all the places he was at. His thing was he went to your car, he would take the change. He wouldn't take your computer, your cell phone, nothing like that. Most people don't even know he was in the car. He says he just walks up and down the blocks, tries your car doors, and basically removes the change. That problem is still ongoing. We have two or three other people we've identified. But we actually have to catch them either on film or where somebody would give us a call, we'd lock them up right then and there. Any other questions to that? No. But please share that video with us. We're actually going to be out uh, canvassing the areas and the, uh, the meetings again and signing people up. Chief? I can't uh, stress enough how important uh, having a video um, utility at your home is and giving us the permission to view that should a crime occur. Uh, we're not only solving burglaries, but uh, we had a motor vehicle accident where a person left the scene uh, and, and killed a woman. And uh, there were a number of videos that were used in that, uh, uh, in that area uh, by the, the detective bureau to figure out who did the crime. Uh, we were able to apprehend that person by the end of that night, which is usually unheard of uh, because of the availability of, of video footage. So please, uh, if you want to help us, one, call the police when you see something, uh, and two, get yourself a, a home camera and then allow us access to, to view it should we need it. Yes, sir. Okay, do we uh, still conduct a joint Roselle Linden patrol? Uh, we, we do not. We, we work with them in narcotics so hand in hand. Uh, and the captain is saying that there is a, a partnership that we have with uh, Roselle and uh, when we're doing a narcotics investigation, but as far as one officer from Linden and one officer from Roselle riding that border patrol, and, and I used to ride that, so it was fantastic. Um, uh, and, and Captain Turby used to ride it as well. Um, what was great about it is that we were able to, to get information from Roselle. Uh, obviously, a lot of their issues were coming over here and vice versa. Uh, it was a great relationship uh, builder for the police departments. Uh, and since we haven't had that, uh, things have been a little, uh, or haven't been as close as we would like them to be. So, um, you know, we're looking in the future to, to bring that up as well. So, excellent point. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other hands. No. I noticed that on Wood Avenue, at the corner of Wood Avenue and Elizabeth Avenue, the stoplight has a left-hand turn, but there's no signage, say, you know, a, a, an arrow in the street or a sign that says left-hand turn. I know that's a county road, but Many times people are in that left-hand turn road and they're going straight and the people in back of them are beeping their horns like crazy because they're not making a left turn. I know what you're saying. I was there yesterday. It's like a, on the southbound, southbound in front of the old Beano's Liquors. Correct. That we'll have to bring up with the county. We'll take notes on it. Candace will take a note again. Some of these have to be, uh, some of these have to be addressed to the county or the state. That is a state road. That is correct. It's southbound at Wood. Excuse me, C Captain Hart, just so you know, I've had that complaint many times been, been to the mayor's office, and I have called the county signage transportation department, and it's fallen on deaf ears, just so you know. So maybe if it comes from the police department, um, it might be addressed. Thank you. Okay. Sure. I have one more. Okay. Um, recently, we've had uh, packages stolen from in front of our house that were delivered. It's our house and the house next door to us. And um, I, I don't know what to do about that. I, we reported it, but. The, the best preventive uh, measure for packages being stolen in front of your house 
are these cameras? I mean, they're, they're inexpensive uh, and, and they're not very difficult to install. Uh, and I know sometimes a lot of us don't embrace the technology, but if you do get a camera and you, and you feel like you're gonna have problems installing it, you know, we, we will do everything humanly possible to send somebody over to help you get it installed. Um, but we do feel that cameras are the answer uh, to, to uh, a lot of these uh, crimes where people are stealing packages off of your, off your porch. Mayor, just like, also just so you know, they have these new doorbells uh -huh. that have cameras in them. So it's a little bit more, uh, less expensive mm -hmm. than installing the cameras on your house <coughs> to ha install a doorbell that has a camera in it. And they're very effective. It's called a ring video system. There, there, are number, there are a number of different products on the, mar on the market now. And, and, and like uh, she mentioned, they're, they're very affordable. They'll but, have it delivered tomorrow. But, but, <laughs> but again, again if, 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 you, if you feel like you don't have the, 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 uh, the ability to have it installed, I mean, there's, there's somebody here who could help you out with that. And if, and if they're not here, there's somebody who can help you. And we'll certainly try to find those individuals to help you out to get installed. Recently, we had somebody that had the camera footage. We were able to identify that person and arrest them. Mm -hmm. But probably before you have your package stolen, if you know you have something coming in, maybe tell, put a note in your door, have one of your neighbors get that package, and have somebody else pick it up for you. I mean, we're going to lock somebody up, but you're not going to still get your package. Right. So that's what we recommend people like take a little prevention, a preventative measure, have somebody else, either a neighbor or something. You, usually, everybody knows their FedEx guy or mail person, the UPS. Tell them if I'm not home, leave it next door with my neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I had a... Uh, John Roman, go ahead. I, uh, I walked through our door. I actually, for the first time in my life, encountered the ring doorbell system. I had a conversation with a couple of residents about it. And I was thinking maybe we could, maybe the police department or the administration can, you know, issue here are three products. That would be awesome if you know the residents had you know different video systems, whether it's a ring or whatnot. And then maybe if they install them and show and sign up for our you know our video watch, that maybe we could give them a two hundred dollar credit or some sort, or a hundred dollars off their bill um, at the end of the year, some sort of small small credit where it's not hitting the, the revenue of the city that much, but also encourages a mass amount of people to, to join the program. The, the nonprofit that I'm associated with, um, we will assist seniors if they can't afford a camera or they need some sort of credit towards the camera, if you, if you contact my office, uh, we will assist you uh, in acquiring a camera uh, if you fit a certain criteria. And I think the primary criteria is you being a senior. So if um, us, we have a limited amount, but we, we can only do a certain amount of people per year. But if you are interested in the camera, you can call my office. We, we do have some money set aside to assist with, with camera installations. Yes, Mr. Ritter. You say you look at the camera people that have cameras? Yes, uh, we, we encourage you, if you, have a, if you have a camera, we encourage you to give your information to the police department so that if something does happen, uh, that the police department will be able to contact you so you, they can actually look at, uh, at, at your footage. I have moments for inside to drive and outside to drive, but it doesn't move, it just takes care of my front step, the driveway, the street the surrounding area. And then if somebody crosses, it'll take a clip of it, and then it just goes back to just watching, but it doesn't give the live feed. Is that something? Well, one of the things about cameras, and you have to understand, I mean, perhaps you don't have a live feed, but if, you know, cameras are very useful in that uh, if something happens on one block and you pick up a, a potential suspect, uh, maybe as he's leaving the area three blocks over, another camera will, will actually see the same individual. So you know that's the, the uh, our intention is to try to have as many people who, are, who own cameras to participate in the program so that collectively uh, we could use it to to, to uh, help prevent crime or or help to deter crime. Well, would something like that work? You know, it's just a clip of like yes. camera place and like two out kind of, like just a clip. That might just give us what an individual was wearing that day, whether he had a jacket on, uh, colored pants, sneakers, or something. Just that one quick clip will definitely help us. My clips stay on here forever. Yeah, and any, any footage uh, of any sort is better than no footage. So uh, uh, certainly a clip is better than nothing. So who do I? Me. I'll take, I'll see you before you go. Okay. And we would encourage anybody who has cameras to uh, contact the police department and, and participate in our, uh, 
and our video surveillance, our, our high, we, we call it our, 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 high, our high tech neighborhood watch program. We're gonna, let me, we're gonna take two more questions and uh, hopefully uh, everybody will have uh, signed a, a sign-in sheet or we have Candace taking all the concerns down. Uh, so I saw a hand go up in the back. I'm gonna try with the gentleman in the back. I don't, I don't think you can put it on a public poll because those polls are owned by um, usually the, the phone company. Um, We have answered them What's the cross? Uh, what's the cross street? So is that out here? Or? Zigzag right over here. You say. I, I believe it was on our enforcement detail. It is on our list. The only way I can say is we have, it's going to be on our selective enforcement list as we uh, roll to go to these areas of all these concerns that we're having. Uh, is it, uh, we'll take a look at whether it needs any other signage. We'll take a look at that a little further. See if it needs any other signs or. That are not clear of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. It is on our list. Thank you. And just so you know, Mr. Prasad uh, in the back, and he's reported this uh, on a number of, of occasions. So uh, we're very, I'm very familiar with that particular uh, location. One more question, and we're going to take the gentleman right here. We have a promenade park in Linden. This is my question. Now there's a fence up. <coughs> You can't sit in there anymore because of vandalism. What's being done about all this? I don't, I don't think there are cameras in the well. There's a camera of people being well, caught doing this. Video. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Back when I get Again, in context to the answer to your question. Uh, when people get arrested, they don't stay in jail forever. Uh, and that's where the issue is. There was a time where we could arrest someone for, for something like vandalism, smoking marijuana in, in public, things like that. They would go to jail. They would end up in the county. Uh, with the bail reform, new bail reform law that's out now, we issue summonses and that person is released. Uh, so people don't get arrested and go to jail anymore. That just doesn't happen unless there's a serious crime. That uh, is no longer a deterring effect for some of the crime or criminal activity that's going on out there. We cannot remove the person from that environment by simply arresting them. We, we charge them with the summons, we bring them in, and we write them a summons, and then they leave. Uh, and then they have their day in court. Uh, I'm not saying whether I'm for bail or for more against it, I'm just telling you that that's the facts, that's how, uh, that's how it plays out. So uh, we can enforce and write summonses all we want, the person is still going to go out there. I'll go back to my original phrase, we have limited resources. So now we have to prioritize where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing. And obviously for us, violent crimes and the, and the suppression of violent crimes and burglaries is the most important thing for us to work on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to thank you all for coming out this evening. Um, I have an open door policy. Uh, my secretary will tell you I could be stacked with meetings all day and you walk off in my office off the street, I'll find time for you. Uh, if you have any kind of problem, we will try to, to address it as best we can. Uh, the chief and his staff, believe me, they're doing everything humanly possible to keep us safe. Uh, I think you're doing a good job. There's always room for improvement, and I, I think uh, as we go further, we will try and we will improve our, our department. And again, probably our best tool that we have for fighting crime is not necessarily the police department, but it's the people in our community. It's your eyes, it's your ears uh, that will help them to better enforce the laws. So, uh, so thank you again for coming out. And again, feel free to contact my office or the police department for anything that you need. You see something suspicious, don't be afraid to call, okay? There's no such thing as a, as, as a, as a dumb question or there's no such thing as um, being afraid to respond to something, okay? If you see something, just call us. Rounds on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm dressing up as, Sal. So again, if you have any questions, you want, you want to write something down, write it down, come to Kansas.